It's your boy Kid Greatness, and today we're in Chinatown. Oh, you the class? <laughs> yeah, we we're in Chinatown in Kilimani, and I'm here with a very very interesting couple. They have a channel called U.S. Meets Kenya. I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves, starting with the lady first. Yeah, hey guys, I'm Faith from Kenya. Okay, and I'm Keith from USA. Yeah, and this is our baby. Serenity. She's called Serenity. Serenity. Yeah. yeah, she's adorable. She's adorable. Okay, so, bro, where are you from in the States? So, I'm originally from Michigan. From Detroit, Michigan. Oh, you from, oh, you from the D. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We'll be out here. We out here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. what first brought you to Kenya? Mm. You know what? The first thing that brought me to Kenya was the nature. And the wildlife. You know, the zoology. Yeah. You know, I wanted to come here to study. I wanted to come here to learn about the animals and everything like that. But uh, I ended up changing directions, and I ended up just coming over here just for the culture, seeing the people and everything like that. So yeah, that's that was my reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then from, because this is a very interesting story, you met <laughs> this beautiful young lady right here. Yeah. So what part of Kenya are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Bungoma, but when I met him, I was schooling in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I was I think I met you when I was in my first year in Kampala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First day on campus? First year. Oh, first. I think second year. Yeah. Second 20, year. Yeah, second year. 2021, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think second year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then y'all was telling me an interesting story about how y'all met. Okay, because so who, I'll let y'all pick who want to describe it. She's good at telling the story, so I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> Maybe you guys want to tell the story too. She wants to tell the story too. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I was, I was online mm -hmm. and I was like, let me try, let me try matching Black American. Yeah. See how it goes. So mm -hmm. when I saw his profile, I swiped back on him. Mm -hmm. And then he said hi. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I don't feel like replying to him. So, <laughs> so, so, so yeah. for three days I never said hi back to. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me, do you like American? <laughs> and then I ignored him. And then he told me, Can I have your number? And then I ignored him. So it was like almost a week. Yeah. And then I told him, Yeah, you can have my Instagram. So after I gave you my Instagram, Wait, you were. Tama, 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 tama. I didn't know it was this. Tama. <laughs> why, why, why you did my man like that? <laughs> I gotta. I gotta I'm, All right, like. She do everybody like that. Everybody I'm, does, I'm right? Just a lazy <laughs> oh, yeah. And I told uh -huh. I'm just a lazy jester. <laughs> Yeah. So after we were talking on Instagram, we connected a little bit and he told me he was gonna come from the US to Kenya. Oh, she might be so we can meet. <laughs> yeah. So he booked his flight, I think after three months of talking, he booked his mm -hmm. flight. Yep. So y'all talked for three months. Yep. I decided to annoy him yep. for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, y'all got it together. Yeah, we got it together yeah. finally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his flight was arriving at five in the morning, right? Uh-huh. So I had to wake up at 4 in the morning just to go pick a man at the airport. So I got up at 4 in the morning, I got ready, I was at the airport by 4.30. Mm -hmm. And then his flight delayed, imagine. And I was there with heels, standing. So I was standing oh. from 4.30 mm -hmm. until 7 in the morning. That's when his flight landed, it delayed by 2 hours. And then when I saw him, he looked like his pictures. He just <laughs> clicked and uh, I liked him. Yeah. How did you feel? Like yeah, I thought like, okay, so I, I knew why my flight was late, right? Yeah. yeah so I figured that because uh, she might not show up, she might, so, okay, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. the flight <laughs> right? was late with two uh -huh. hours, you know? Yeah. So when I saw you, I was so excited. Mm -hmm. I ran, I hugged you. Mm -hmm. And then we booked an Uber. We went to check in to your hotel. And mm -hmm. after checking in, I think I never went back to my house. Yeah, that was that was it. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Checked in to the hotel. I never went back to my place. Like mm -hmm. that's just it. <laughs> that's how we moved in. Uh -huh. And it's been like almost three years now. Like three years. Three years together. Yeah. We have a child. So after just taking the hotel, we were like, we want to get to know each other more. Like, so we're just spending each time knowing each other. And then I told him, oh, maybe we should get an apartment together. Oh wow! Like, so like, yeah. like, how long? It's okay. It's okay. Y'all never left. So like, how long did it take for y'all to like get an apartment together? Oh, it's like quick. three days. Yeah, because I was already. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah. After we checked into the mm-hmm. hotel, I was like, this is the guy, and he was like, this is the guy I'm looking So this was like love yeah. at first sight. Like, yeah. I was just like, oh, yeah. Like, I, so ever since mm-hmm. we met, we have not been apart. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. every day we're yeah. together. It's, it's, it's kind of, I don't like that, though. It's kind of corny, love at first sight. I don't like that. But it's, yeah. it, it, it I think, bro, like that's that, the definition, though, yeah, bro. Like, it's it gotta be, right? I mean, I'll be honest, I never met a girl, uh-huh. and I just stayed with her for the next three years. Like, uh-huh. that that's some love right there. Like, yeah. Matching someone online, you meet, and then you just stay together like that from mm-hmm. the first day. So I just went to my place, I picked my bags, mm-hmm. then we went to look for an apartment in Mombasa. We furnished our house, mm-hmm. then we moved in like that. Yeah. So, and he was like, Oh, I'm not going back to my country, you know? Mm-hmm. And when he was staying here. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so you were telling me mm-hmm. about. You surprised him by doing certain things. Yeah, so when he was home. here, after we moved in, he saw like I'm doing laundry. Mm-hmm. Mostly I preferred washing with my hands. And then I go hang them on the rooftop on the sun. Mm-hmm. I'm cleaning the house, I'm cooking, I go to the market to get food. And he was like, wow, in America mm-hmm. women rarely do that. Oh, so yeah. he was like, I'm definitely keeping you. Uh, so he was so blown like, away. So he was like, <laughs> she cooked, she cleaned. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you wasn't used to that, bro. So that, yeah. That, that's not something that we see so often in the U.S., right? A lot of the women are not cooking and cleaning for you. A lot of women are not doing your clothes for you, you know, uh, all that stuff, you know? So it's a it's a different uh, type of relationship when you come to Africa with women, usually. But it happens in America, but not so much, not so often. So, yeah. Yeah, different. so after yeah. getting the first apartment, mm-hmm. we decided to switch houses. We tried doing like a restaurant business. You remember? Yeah. Oh, y'all were in a business. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, 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 yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> right, let's take a step back, then. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, so bro, y'all met, mm-hmm. fell in love. Yeah. You said I'm not going back to the states. Mm-hmm. So, how did you stay here the first couple of months? Was you working remotely, oh, yeah. or were you doing like how mm-hmm. would you? Yeah, yeah. So I decided to do teaching. So I've been teaching online for the first uh, just since I've been here. I've been teaching online. So yeah. yeah. Oh, so you just so you already mm-hmm. had your degree mm-hmm. in education, so you just yeah. like mm-hmm. you found the gig online. Yeah, yeah, and and I recommend that you know for people to find some work online and then come to Africa, like have some income coming in before you come here. You know, it's better that way, or at least save some money. You know. Yeah, because actually mm-hmm. one of my boys was doing that. One of my boys. Oh, yeah, yeah actually we broke a mutual friend of us. <laughs> we found out we had a mutual friend. He was doing yep, that. Yep. So you recommend mm-hmm. teaching online as a. Because is it hard to find a job teaching online? Or what, like, how was the experience for you? Because I'm curious about that. It was easy. It was easy to find a job teaching online. It, it, as long as you have experience or a degree, you know, you can you can find one pretty easy. There's so many uh, English teaching jobs available. So yeah, it's real simple. And you don't, do you feel as though you need a degree or the, mm-hmm. or the, can you just do it like, with the TEF? That's what it's called, right? Oh yeah, TEFL. Yeah, you know, you don't need to have a degree, but it's better to have one. You know, so at least associate's degree, mm. you can find a job real fast. But uh, you don't need one though. You can still find work without a degree. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a that's a that's a that's a gem right there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah, a lot of a lot of brothers mm-hmm. always asking me personally. I get so many DMs about like, how can I live overseas? Right. What can I do? So like, yo, yeah. mm-hmm. check out teaching online. Because mm-hmm. this is this is like the third brother I, I met that <laughs> teach online to sustain himself. So it's very definitely working. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but you were talking about y'all was in Mombasa. So wait, yes. y'all met in Mombasa or did y'all meet in Nairobi? Mombasa. Mombasa. Y'all met in Mombasa. Yeah. Okay, so y'all met in Mombasa. Yep. Y'all fell in love. Mm-hmm. Then y'all said y'all was opening a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. So what happened then? <laughs> you, I'll tell the person you can go. Yeah. Okay, I, I think um, we opened a restaurant. So my cousin also lives here. I have a cousin. He lives in Mombasa. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to get my family to move out here, bro. Right, good, right. Good. So, so we opened the restaurant together, and uh, it was fun. It was good at, at first, yeah. but then it became stressful, right, and hard to travel. You know, because I wanted to travel to other countries, but you kind of had to stay at the restaurant to supervise. And we were trying to get the restaurant to get out of that. You know, we were trying to get out of the supervisor role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. But it didn't. It never. We never were able to get it out. You know, we never were able to do that. So, uh, unfortunately, the restaurant didn't do so well at the end. But, yeah. but it was a good experience. I think it was a fun experience that we were able to do that. All right. Hold on. Let's take a step back. <laughs> okay. Let's take a step back. Yeah. Kind of, so, what was the process of opening a business in Kenya? Like, because mm-hmm. a lot of people are going to be interested in like mm-hmm. 
like did you have to go to like get a lawyer and mm-hmm. register something or was it like you can kind of freestyle it until you make a little money then you go register like how was that process yeah okay so opening a business in kenya if you're a foreigner uh you have to get the business permit first mm-hmm. so it's a lot of money okay so how, how much is the business permit uh i think it's like 200 000 cash a year that's a lot oh 200 000 200 yeah. so that's about like a thousand something like a hundred dollars one thousand five hundred dollars yeah okay so mm-hmm. if you know a local you can use a kenyan then just open it and pay like only four thousand a year so for him wait four thousand wait. wait no no yeah, we're paying the business permit for thousand showing. Oh, because because of you, because you was a local. Yeah, so he, he registered the business in my name. <laughs> so nah, I'm not saying it, but like, <laughs> yo, you, you no, no. know, uh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, yeah, go ahead. So if you have a local, you're gonna use a local Kenyan mm-hmm. to pay four thousand a year. So. He just registered the business in my name, then we're running the restaurant like that. So you have to have someone you trust. Don't trust. do it just mm-hmm. anyone. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you. Mm-hmm. So okay, so y'all mm-hmm. registered the business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then like, with the property y'all found to run the restaurant, did y'all have to do like month to month or was it like a yearly mm-hmm. lease? How did that process work? Yeah, it was a month to month. We were paying a month to month, but unfortunately the profits weren't exceeding the month to month payment that we were paying. You know. Yeah. So that that was the issue with with the business. So. Yeah, because okay, you don't have to give them exact figures because like, yeah. I like giving mm-hmm. like, so okay. people have an idea because this is, I yeah. get these questions yes. a lot. So, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. so how, what would you estimate like your expenses? Like, just a, give us a round, like a, a range for like mm-hmm. every month, like just the rent, mm-hmm. the food costs, mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. So, I was the one in charge of the finances most of the time, like buying the food, restocking. So, every month, the restaurant costed us uh, $200 a month. Which was stuff. thirty thousand Kenyan shillings, just the rent for the place. Oh, oh that's then, not bad. Yeah. And then our workers, two. we were paying the workers four dollars a day. Mm. Wait, wait, and okay, how many wait, 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 so Five in the morning to midnight. No, oh, not that. Wow. No, we paid them. It was like it was like five in the morning, like midday, like three, four, five, six, or something like that. Yeah. So y'all yeah, spending like twenty yeah. to twenty-four dollars on employees, if two hundred dollars a day. Yeah. And then y'all spending two hundred dollars on rent. Yeah, and yeah. then on buying food. Mm-hmm. Uh, Depends what you're buying because in Kenya everything is expensive now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We will spend like maybe a hundred dollars for the whole week. Mm-hmm. But making profit is very hard, and then the electricity was costing us mm-hmm. maybe uh, three dollars for the whole week mm-hmm. for growing. the electricity bill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, roundabout math, like so, mm-hmm. y'all, y'all expense was, was between like a thousand US to like fifteen hundred US a month running mm-hmm. a business. Like that. Yeah, because yeah. that's what I'm saying. Because mm-hmm. like, if you if you just do the math with mm-hmm. the employees and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not. That's actually not bad. So yeah. that means you can mm-hmm. actually come to like. But that's Mombasa. Yeah. So you could come Mombasa like like twenty Gs, thirty yeah. Gs, and open a business. Yeah. Y'all think that's reasonable? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can open mm-hmm. twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, twenty thousand. Yeah. That's Definitely. a lot. We spent less than that opening our business. Yeah. Like furnishing the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, it only cost us like I would say four thousand dollars. Yeah. Like so. buy everything, mm-hmm. like chairs, tables. Mm-hmm. A fridge, a cooker, yep. coffee mm-hmm. maker, yep, okay. like buying everything for the restaurant mm-hmm. was only four thousand dollars. So wow, with the, like five thousand dollars, you're good to open a restaurant in Kenya. Yeah. Small one, yeah, yeah. a small, small one. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, probably like about the size of this place yep. right now. Yep, about the size. Yeah, yeah about the size of this mm-hmm. place. Yeah. But, you, but y'all said the issue was mm-hmm. the profit. Like, so what, did y'all yes. pick the bad a bad location? You know what? what? That that could have been it. It could have been the location. You know, we did have a lot of competitors too, of people who've been there for a long time. You yeah. know. So they had a lot of customers, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so it was it was difficult a little bit to for that reason. But any other any other uh, reasons you think? Yeah. Also, the employees, some yeah. of them were kind of lazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's oh my true. God. That's true. Because yeah. it's yeah. like on a Monday, yeah. on a Monday, our oh. main chef is saying, "I can't show up to work. I have to go to church." Yeah. So on a Monday. Find, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's saying yes to go to church. We have to find somebody to. Right. Check in for him to for replace the him. Like, what? Okay, okay. That's, I mean, it's, I understand it's the religion. Like but. in Kenya, people put church before work. 
sometimes, yeah. Okay, so I gotta ask you like, This is my experience too, in Tanzania too. It's like, because I always have friends who be like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm not going to work today. It's like just, I don't feel like it. Or you, or you see people that, like, you meet at their job and then you don't see them at their job no more. You find them on the street, like, what happened? You're like, oh, I just stopped going. Wow. So did, did y'all have that issue too with like employee turnover? People just disappear, yes. don't show the word. Yeah, that was the big problem, employee turnover. So that now you find mm-hmm. a new employee like every week because they keep disappearing. Yeah, we had to get at least one new employer almost every week. Every like, week, like, almost every week. But, at, at the end, it's, at the end of it, we start, it started to get you know we started to have solid employees, but uh, before that, it was like every week though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy because like yeah. this, because you know that that's kind of like. It's kind of like a contradiction or it's mm. ironic because like a lot mm. of people in Kenya said there's no opportunity yeah, for jobs right but you said we well, all gave people jobs they yeah. didn't go to work yeah that's right that's the that was the big issue and, and that's you what, know we were paying more than we we're paying a more five-star than. hotel really you know people who work in these big hotels get paid like four dollars a day and the ones working in small restaurants get like one dollar a day mm. we were paying them four dollars which they pay mm. Like in the big restaurants, maybe when you go to Kempinski, they pay like 700 a day to 1,000. Mm. That's oh. what you're paying our workers, a salary for a five-star hotel. So y'all were paying a premium and people still didn't want to work. Yeah, we were paying a lot better. A lot of money. That's for sure, yeah. That's crazy. Like I'm that's, just, I'm blown. Away. <laughs> that's what. That's how we felt. How you feel right now? Yeah, but, <laughs> but you feel like that was the uh-huh. coast, though. You think that was called more of the, the Swahili influence? Because uh, I me, feel like the coast. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me say this. I think it's because uh, every people, people in Mombasa had like the, uh, the hustler mentality. So like, like maybe they'll do a job today, then they do a different job the next day, then they do this job this this, this day. So yeah. they don't usually stay long term in a job. So they'll they'll jump from job to job. It's, that's what I've noticed being in Mombasa and talking to people. I don't know how you feel about that. I just think uh, mm-hmm. in Kenya, most of them people are lazy. <laughs> how are we paying you a five star hotel salary and you don't want to show up to work? That's also part of it. <laughs> that's all. That's all. That's all. I was, at, that's all I was about to ask you, because like, y'all was at the coast. So I felt like mm-hmm. there was more of that Swahili. Because I feel yeah. like Swahili culture is more like everybody's like chill. Yeah. Everything goes at they mm-hmm. their own pace. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt like if y'all felt like if y'all feel if y'all brought that restaurant, y'all opened a restaurant in Nairobi, mm-hmm. would y'all have the same issue, or you think it'd be better? Uh, what do you think? I, I think know. it would be different. In mm-hmm. Nairobi, people has some more than Mombasa. Yeah. Cause yeah, I feel like Nairobi people are like this. Like yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. But Mombasa is like people are like ah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is true, right? But I think also um, it was some part of our fault too. You know, I think that it was our first restaurant, mm-hmm. so we weren't the most organized. You know, and we were learning on the job. You know, okay. basically. And we were too nice to them. We were very nice. Uh, you know, if someone asks for a nice. day off, you can get it. You know, yeah. I need a little extra for this. Less. Okay. We don't you know, okay. Not, no, no, you got to be strict on them. You like know? Keith and I are very nice people. We don't know how to mm-hmm. shout at someone. So can, instead of them reporting at five, someone is coming at eight. But we are too nice. Just tell them next time, correct? But mm-hmm. if you get a normal Kenyan boss, they'll shout at you and insult you. So yeah. also they knew we are too mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. And then some of the employees were stealing food from our restaurant. So yeah, that's another problem. Too, yeah. We once found an employee has packed food like what a thousand shillings. Mm-hmm. They're ready to steal it and take it home. Yeah, the meat. That was a big problem. Everybody was trying to steal the meat that, that we got. Yeah, so making profit is hard because the employees are stealing from you. Oh, that's crazy. Like, yeah. this is, this is, like, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel so bad because I see like I was doing everything right, but like, yeah, because yeah. like I had experiences. Like I seen like mm-hmm. when other cultures come to like yeah. come to the continent right. and how they run their businesses. Mm-hmm. They they they're way more strict, and I see people yeah. take it way more serious. So do you mm-hmm. think it contribute that you was like? I felt like I was too nice, so yeah. it's like, okay, they violated mm-hmm. y'all. You were too nice. So yeah. We, so we just shut the restaurant. Yeah, at first. At the end, we got more strict, especially me, but... Oh, yeah, you got, they got tired. Yeah, like, yeah. I, they, I cracked they, that whip. Yeah, they're they like, my Like, if anybody students. steals, he fires them. <laughs> yeah. If he catches somebody mm-hmm. stealing, fired. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. At the end, it started to look better, but we ended up closing it anyway. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. the okay. Then that's the only business y'all did so far. Oh, yeah. So far, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about doing farming in the village. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, end of this month, we might go to the village, check out some farms, and try farming. Yeah, yeah. We're looking into it. So okay, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you come to Kenya, like mm-hmm. renting a land in the village might only cost you 
forty dollars for the whole year, like an acre of land. Wait, what? Wait, yeah. say that again? Yeah, when you go to the village, mm -hmm. like you just rent land for like a year. Like they give you land for like a year, and then yeah. you, you'll pay like ten thousand Kenyan shillings. Renting. Yeah. For per acre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the whole acre for like a, a year. So after one year, you have to give back the land. So within that year, you can plant like very many crops, and then you can sell them and get a profit. So it's that cheap to do farming in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think so that's all like. Right. <laughs> Yeah, y'all dropping a lot of gyms here. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you come, you can visit the villages and rent out land and do farming, and mm -hmm. it has a lot of profit. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Alright, get off of the business tip. Since y'all been out here, because I feel like y'all dropping a lot of gems that good. Yeah. I'm not to start paying for this in a minute. Cause All right, I, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, but. But yeah, so. Have y'all traveled around since y'all been together? Like, have y'all been around East Africa? Like. Have y'all bounced around the continent, or did y'all spend the majority of time in Kenya? Yeah, we, we've been traveling a little bit. You know, uh, the first country we went to was Tanzania together, right? And uh, we love Tanzania. Then we went to Uganda, and I went to Ethiopia. So yeah, it's it, yeah, we've been doing some traveling, and we want to travel some more. So we're gonna yeah, go to February, South Africa. Yeah. Oh, yeah, going to South Africa. Oh yeah, going to South Africa. Oh yeah, that's next. Like, <laughs> well, that's a slow. So okay, uh -huh. how was your experience in? Tanzania, like my 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 heart. I always call that my heart. It was our first love. Mm -hmm. We have different experiences, so she can go first. <laughs> yeah, in Tanzania, it has a lot of scammers. <laughs> that was that was a culture shock to me. I thought Kenyans are scammers, but Tanzania. Really? Tanzania okay, talk about talk about talk about. We gotta we gotta. You can't just say that and just like breathe fast. Mm -hmm. Cause this is the thing in Tanzania, they always say Kenya has so many scammers. Mm -hmm. So you feel like it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you a story. We we were we rented like a mansion. Mm -hmm. So our neighbor next door came, connected electric cables in our house in mm -hmm. the servant quarter. Mm -hmm. So he was stealing our electricity with our husband. So he doesn't pay for power. He wait. connected his power to our house. Wait, wait, wait. How did wait? How did he come? He does tunnels underground. So. Oh. And one day, <laughs> like Tanzania's coming with another day. Yeah. Yo, uh, wait, stop, stop, time out. This is on some prison break. He does a tunnel yeah. and connected. Yeah. And, but wait, how did y'all not notice this? Though? This was before we moved it's in. Because oh, okay, yeah. okay. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, you can see him. Uh -huh. Digging in the so, back. Right, right, right. When I went mm -hmm. to check the servant's quarter, because we were not checking it, because it's on the other side of the house, right. I had to check and I saw cables mm -hmm. that were like, going underground, mm -hmm. and then I disconnected them. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, he was coming to say, uh, What is wrong with the power? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> talk about, talk yeah, about. Chill. Chill, talk, yo, talk, wait, 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 talk about. <laughs> My man was still in power, <laughs> and he just rolled up like, yeah. Yeah. like Yo, did you want to on here? Like, yo, did y'all like, like, pay the bills? Right? Like, 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 what's going on? <laughs> He thought he will not notice it, mm -hmm. but I'm very smart. Mm -hmm. Even he did not notice. And then he came in the evening to ask what is wrong with the power. Mm -hmm. And then I told him, so it was your cable connected to our house. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I was using your power to do something. Then I told him, we can't afford to pay for your power mm -hmm. now, so we disconnected you. Right. Yo, that's that's yeah. that, that's some whole yeah. new level of scary. I'm thinking that maybe he thought because I'm American that maybe he's like okay, you can you can pay for it. It's not it's not going to cost so much for you. Yeah. So you can go ahead and pay for it. And, and then he acted like there was no big problem. Like he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he even comes to us like, like what is wrong with the car? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, okay. I'm like, what did I do wrong? And, Speak of that because you just brought up a good point. Yeah. Because you've been a you lived in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. You lived in Kenya. Yeah. So how has been your experience? Being mm. an American, like how do mm. people treat you? Because like I have, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious about your experience. Cause you've been there longer than me, actually. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's good and bad. You know, sometimes you get the scamming, like she said. You know, something like that. People expect money from you. Mm -hmm. But then you know, sometimes uh, people are like really nice to you, especially in Kenya. People are super friendly to you. Everybody wants to talk to you. It's so easy to make friends here, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So it, it just kind of depends on the individual, you know. So there's there's good and you got your bad, you know what I'm saying? Okay, but yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's go a little deep. Let's go let's get there. All right. Because you said like, mm -hmm. did you ever get that experience? Because like I know in Tanzania, mm -hmm. once people found out I was American, <laughs> it was always like, uh -huh. okay, yeah, everything's on him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like whatever. Like, yeah. People just, it was. To, I'm not gonna it, like. I don't wanna. Uh -huh. Influence you, but like, did yeah. you get that experience? Like, when people found out you're American, it's like, okay, yeah, he got everything, and we don't have to worry about nothing no more. You know what? What I was most surprised was when we first got there, we were getting ripped off, cheated, 
from the uh, oh the Boda Boda drivers, yeah. right? The, the motorcycle drivers. Really, Boda? But you speak Swahili though. Yeah. yeah so this is what I'm gonna say. It, that's wait one second. That that was the problem because I was like, she's Kenyan. And she's and getting cheated. You know, I understand me. I understand you understand they think me. Kenya, but Kenya too. Them. Right, right. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah they kind of <laughs> get that because yeah. Yeah, yeah. But even okay, even if you go <laughs> to them like and you speak Swahili, I mean, but get, but <laughs> yeah, Swahili is different than Tanzanian. Yeah. Mm. You couldn't even get away with it. Like <laughs> they still just like, oh nah, double yeah, the price. <laughs> they say Kenyans are richer than us, so mm-hmm. like you, you get you are asking someone to plant grass for us, which in Kenya you pay someone like five hundred shillings to do it. Yeah. But the guy in Tanzania is asking us for like 40,000 Kenyan shillings. Wait, so what? Like, yeah. Like 300 something dollars. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. He told us for me to help you plant grass in your house, you have to give me 300 dollars. And then I told him in Kenya, I'll only pay someone 3 dollars for that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it, it's crazy. The scamming is crazy in Tanzania. Like, that's where we experienced most of the scams. So it actually was in Tanzania, right? So okay, but I'm pretty sure you haven't experienced that here because you have a kid. Yeah, kid. not so much, you know. Okay, what yeah. about when you're by yourself? When you're not, yeah. mm-hmm. how do you how do you people treat you when you're by yourself? You know what? I think I don't get. I think maybe people can try to scam me, right? Mm-hmm. But I know the prices, you know, and I know how much something should be. Yeah. So if someone tries, you know, I I just I learn from her, you know. If someone's you know saying five hundred, I know it's two hundred. I say like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you. You know, two hundred or no, I'm just gonna walk away. Then they're like, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, give you two hundred. I'll give you two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of yeah. That's been the experience too. Like, so, yeah. Cause yeah, I've seen like, cause you've been here for a while. Mm-hmm. I ran into the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like they overcharge me all the time, especially like. Mm-hmm. I don't know, cause I feel like people always feel like I'm some type of artist or something. Like they, <laughs> rapper or something. Yeah, rapper or yeah. singer. So I feel like it doesn't help me. Maybe if I had a struggle. Do you get that too? I'm, I'm curious. Did you? Ah, uh, the dreadlocks. Yeah. <laughs> do you get that? Like, oh, the, 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 do you get the rasta like uh, all the time? Rasta, rasta. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, I, I there was I had a bad experience one time. You know, with the police. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's about. So you know, I was riding my bike and uh, the officers pulled me over. And I came over, and, and it's because I had dreadlocks, I think, you know. And they're asking me, you know, do you have? Uh, let me check your fanny pack. I always carry a fanny pack. Yeah. And and I'm asking them, and I, I'm being aggressive, which you shouldn't do. And I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you want to? Why do you want to look in my my fanny pack for? You know, and I'm like refusing at first, and then but then I do, and they're just uh, they're checking for weed. They're saying I'm trying to check to see if you have weed on you. Um, you know. So I think. Yeah. There's some stereotype with that, right? Also, at yeah, the most village market, mm. the guy can ask, "Are you buying weed?" That's oh, that's right. That talk. just happened. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. So a guy just came up to me and asked me. Uh, everybody sitting there. He just came to me and said, "You want to buy some weed?" And I said, "Oh like, no." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I can tell you, you don't understand how much I get every. <laughs> Even though I'm in the states, random people always come up to me like, "Yo, oh, yo, really? tree, tree." I'm like, hey, what, what, "Do I just uh-huh. look like I always eat weed?" It's like, the dreadlocks, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't have dreads. Like, yeah, dreads are Yeah. Okay, so, but you, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you never got the like. Mm-hmm. He was a singer thing. I did. I got yeah. but from Rwanda. Someone said I look like a singer from Rwanda. Rwanda. I don't know. Yeah, that's what they said too. Like Rwanda too. I'm like, I don't know what it is. Like. <laughs> I guess when you get dressed, your forehead looks big or something like that. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, but yeah. Mm-hmm. The baby's getting sleepy, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to wrap this up. So, so tell us about your channel. Tell us what people can expect yeah. if they will subscribe to your channel. You want to go first? You go first. Yeah, so on our channel, basically, we just do videos showing around Kenya and any information you need about Kenya. Yeah, typically, that's what we do on our channel. And also, after Christmas, it's gonna be village vlogs. I'm taking you to the village to work oh. in the farm. Oh, be, go look after the, the cows. Okay. Go back in the river. So you'll wait for those mm. videos about the village. And we'll also be doing some traveling too. So yeah. you'll see more traveling videos. Unfortunately, we didn't get much videos from uh, Uganda. Uganda, or not much from Tanzania. Yeah. So, but we'll try to do do that more too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely subscribe to the channel. U.S. meets Kenya. I'm gonna put all their links in the description. And I'll, as a final thought, like, what what you want the people to know? Like, people who who thinking about coming to Kenya, or just something that you want the world to know. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you could go first because you've been doing okay. a lot of. Okay, I go first. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that it's safe. You know, a lot of people think that it's unsafe to come to Kenya or Africa in general. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's safe to come here. You should come here and experience different culture, different life, and uh, just have fun. You know, Kenya is a fun place to come to and uh, in a good place to invest in, too. So I highly recommend you to do that. Black Americans, anyone, come here. Mm-hmm. Hey, no, 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 don't say <laughs> you your turn. Your turn. <laughs> your turn. Yeah. Okay, yeah, guys, my turn. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Kenya is a great place. Mm-hmm. When you locate here, you won't have language barrier. Everybody can speak English. As you can see, I can talk very good English. <laughs> Everybody yeah. in Kenya speaks English. You will not have a hard time. It's safe. It's developed. Things are quick. When you order things online, they deliver to you ASAP. Not like Tanzania, you wait for one hour. Oh, one, right? oh, oh wow, you say shot, 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 this is the best for me. She's not a fan of Tanzania. I still love you, Tanzania. I like Tanzania too. It's okay. Hey, Tanzania, you're my first love. You always be my first love. Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah. I appreciate y'all guys taking the time. Mm-hmm. Serenity, she's calmed down. Like, yeah, she got, we bored her to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, everybody go check out their channel. US meets Kenya. Subscribe. And I appreciate y'all watching. And you can't rush greatness. We out.